This is Tom Bernanke, and today I'm talking about flat feet. So watch this. When you land and your foot buckles out, it stretches all your ligaments on the bottom of your foot, the inside of your ankle, knee pain, hip pain, back pain. We're starting now. Flat postural problems. So knee problems, hip problems. I'm gonna give you an example. I work very closely with a knee surgeon who replaces a lot of knees. And there's a lot of patients due to age, due to blood flow problems where they can't get their knee replaced. I would personally estimate by correcting their foot problems, their flat feet, their postural problems, I'd say like 80 plus percent of their pain goes away. Even when people have like bone on bone knee arthritis, the pain can improve a lot. When people are lined up properly and walking properly, they can stand longer, they can clean the yard longer, they can go to work longer, they can go on longer walks, they just feel better. And then their muscles start to work better, they start to function better. If you want that, this guide is worth watching. And if you have a family member who's struggling, I know for me, my mom and my dad, when I did this stuff, a lot of their knee pain, their hip pain went away. So if you have relatives, please share this with them because this definitely helps videos like this get out and gets people to stop making the common mistakes that should be fairly simple to fix. What are flat feet? Flat feet are defined as very flat bone. I look at the angles on an x-ray, how much does it flatten? How much does your heel drop? Or you could have a very high arched foot. So a very high arched foot is something like this. So when your arch is very high, it could be something called a cavus foot type. But on the other hand, when your knee's tight, your foot flattens out. So you could have a high arched foot type that still flattens out. That's called overpronation. When people have knee problems, hip problems, back problems, even with a high arched foot, they can overpronate. So I have a lot of people with high arched feet that think they're flat footed. That's where it gets really confusing. You have a lot of joints, you have a lot of different bones, a lot of different muscles in your feet, and they could all be overloaded. Common pains that you can feel are plantar fasciitis, which is the ligament that connects your heel to your toes. Your Achilles tendon in the back connects your calf muscle to the back of your heel. You could have ankle joint pain. You could have subtalar joint pain, which is this joint right here. You could have ball of the foot pain. You could lean on your other side, on your other hip. Flat feet are why people have unequal limb lengths. I work at a center where they correct people with child deformities, a real unequal limb length. The guy told me was, hey, Tom, 99% of what we do here is correct muscle imbalances. It's never the bone that's different in length. So that's the trick with flat feet. It's usually soft tissue injuries, weakness, muscle imbalances. And then flat feet lead to conditions like bunions, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, Achilles tendonitis, Morton's neuroma, Baxter's neuritis, posterior tibial tendonitis, tarsal tunnel, perineal problems anterior tibial tendonitis. There's just so many problems that flat feet can lead to. There are four grades of flat feet. Number one is mild. Your foot looks normal, but your plantar fascia, the inside of your ankle starts to hurt. Grade two is when your arch starts to collapse a little bit, when the ligaments actually start to stretch and deform. Stage three is when your arch is flat all the way on the ground. You have no arch, your ankles start to roll in. And grade four is when all of this becomes rigid, when your ankle's actually collapsing and you're stuck. Your foot doesn't really straight. So we want to avoid that because grade four is really where you need the surgical procedures and we want to avoid the surgery. I see a lot of kids come in with flat feet and I'll tell you as a kid it's all soft tissue problems. You can correct the majority of these with the tips that I'm going to talk about. For adults who have arthritis, who have more severe problems, you might need something more even if you have family genetics. But some of the causes include genetics. Some people call these growing pains but hey for me there's no such thing as growing pains. It's always an identifiable tendonitis or tightness or biomechanical postural issue. But you could have more advanced things. You could have heel spurs, you could have arthritis, you could have rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis. There's knee problems, there's hip problems that contribute to flat foot. This is where diagnosis comes in. Even though these guides really help online, if it's not getting better or if something unusual is going on, come see a podiatrist like me. If you're in Michigan, I'd love to see you. I can dispense shoes, orthotics, and stuff like candy on the first appointment. We'll get you better. So come see me down in Michigan. We can get x-rays, ultrasounds, see if you have some damage to some ligament, and we can get your flat foot better. Make sure to see a podiatrist in your area if you're having a problem not getting better. First thing that I would do is, and this is very important, is a biomechanical exam. This is so important. I have patients essentially walk, and I look at their hips, their knees, their hamstrings, their thigh muscles, their calf muscles, their feet. I have them sit in front of me and I actually bend their hips. I check the hips, how are they bending? I bend the knees in and out. I see the knee flexibility. I palpate the muscles to see which ones are overworked, which ones are sore, which ones are loose. I bend the ankles 
up and down. I bend the big toe joints up and down. I bend the smaller toes. I turn the ankles in and out. You measure and write down how tight everything is. And you see, is this a bone problem or is it a soft tissue problem? If it's a soft tissue problem, by holding it straight, embracing orthotic shoes, loosening it up, massaging it, it will get better. And this is kind of the trick. You want to look at your foot as an object that's being punched. Muscle imbalances or joint imbalances are the punch. And if you keep getting punched all day, your foot's going to be sore. If you stop punching your foot, it's going to feel better and it's going to move normally again. First thing we want to do is we want to stop the punch. Easy things to do, there's over-the-counter medications like anti-inflammatories, there's creams, ibuprofen, anti-inflammatories, aspirin, Tylenol, they can all help. Probably ibuprofen is the best because it's an anti-inflammatory, whereas Tylenol more works on your brain. Aspirin, that's not really its intended purpose, but I don't recommend medications because it does not stop the punch. You can also use creams. Creams can work really good. There's creams like Voltaren cream, there's cannabis type creams, there's CBD oil, there's biofreeze, there's capsaicin. I have a list of my favorite creams down below. I go over that more in my home remedies section. But again, it does not stop the punch. Creams can be really good for pain relief. So can things like icing. So icing for 15, 20 minutes at a time can make your joints better. It can make them function better. You can do injections as well. There's steroid injections, there's heel injections, there's PRP injections, there's Botox injections, there's stem cell injections. There's so many different injections out there. Realistically, if you have really bad plantar fasciitis or some type of nerve compression, it might be worth an injection to see if that pain goes away. I call this a diagnostic injection because sometimes if we're performing a treatment and something's not getting better for some reason, then maybe injecting it, we can see if it goes away or not. Sometimes it goes away and stays away and that's just a great solution. At the very least, that gives us more info. I like to use injections to make sure a ligament or potentially a heel spur is not the underlying cause. But the next best way to stop this punch is you have to get some good supportive shoes, some good supportive slippers, some sandals. Barefoot walking. Is this good for you? I would say if you're a young healthy person without postural problems, barefoot running and walking is great. A lot of the times it helps you long-term walk straighter, builds up your muscle. I have a video that goes over that in detail, exactly how to do that. The big lies and myths and studies of barefoot walking and barefoot shoes. In this video, with flat feet, we wanna hold you straight until you get used to walking straight. That's a good way to think about it. Really good supportive shoes. You don't need to get crazy and buy like $500 shoes or custom shoes. I go over my best shoe brands and it really kind of depends on your biomechanical exam and your age. One of the best things you can do is just try the different shoe brands and see what feels good. I go over my favorite brands. These include things like Brooks, Asics, Saucony, On, Kuru, New Balance are really good. There's a lot of great shoe brands. I go over all my favorites below. But the number one orthopedic shoe brand, if you're like in your 60s, 70s, and 80s, and that's a lot of my watchers on this channel, I love a shoe that meets 10 criteria. You essentially want a stiff, tight heel. You don't want it to be flexible in the middle. You want it to take pressure off your heel, your arch, the front of your foot. You want it to be a solid material and you want it to have room for your toes so it's not compressing and causing bunions and hammer toes. There's a lot of factors you look for in a shoe. One of my favorite shoes and one we dispense in the office is called OrthoFeet. I actually work with OrthoFeet. They're a great shoe company. They come with soft pre-made orthotics inside them. They're a great shoe. They can have Velcro layers for older people that have a hard time coming down. You can squeeze into them pretty easily. They also have different shoes where the back drops. So there's a lot of options. OrthoFeet, for example, makes slippers, sandals. You can basically support yourself until a lot of this instability, muscle soreness, and joint pain goes away. That's a preferred start. If you pick a shoe, all the ones that I mentioned are orthotic friendly because our next big trick is orthotics. Now take a look at this. When I push down, look at how the arch collapses. See that? When I push here, take a look how it collapses. But when I put an orthotic up here, and this is like a $20 orthotic, look it, it's not collapsing, it's not twisting out. So watch this, twisting out, collapsing, now no longer collapsing. All those muscles and ligaments that I mentioned, they're now no longer being stretched. You can take a shoe that's not super supportive and add this, and now all of a sudden you're way more supportive. Here's kind of the trick in this case is, if a dentist is straightening a tooth, you don't want to straighten it all at once because it's going to hurt. That could be tooth surgery, for example. What you want to do is apply braces and straighten it a little bit, 
a month later, straighten a little bit more, a month later, straighten it a little bit more. What I like to do with my patients is get some good cushion slippers, get some good supportive shoes. Get used to those for a week, two weeks, three weeks. As you get used to those and you make sure your knees aren't hurting, your backs aren't hurting, you want to get yourself some pre-made orthotics. I link my favorites down below, but I have a video too where I go over every major pre-made orthotic brand, the pros, the costs, the cons, the pros and costs of the cons. So all three of those, these are not ones where I say, hey, you have to go get a custom orthotic. Start with the pre-made ones, get used to them. For most people, that's gonna get them a whole lot better if you find the right one based on your condition. Then that's when you wanna look at custom orthotics. Now there's lots of layers of custom orthotics as well. There's boxes you can step on that are mailed to your house. They can work really well. I'd say there's not a huge improvement over the pre-made ones versus those because they err on the side of caution. They don't make them too aggressive. There's ones where you could use an iPhone to scan the bottom of your foot. That can do extremely well. I use this a lot for my patients where that's actually made from a prosthetics lab for both the box and the iPhone scanner. That's gonna help a little bit more than the pre-made ones. In the office, I actually use a scanner and we can, based on your biomechanical exam, make very aggressive adjustments or corrections. With a podiatrist in their office, like myself, we can go even more aggressive than those pre-made ones that they send you, but you still wanna get used to it with the soft ones. You don't wanna go from nothing to the aggressive custom insert. The problem is, kind of like a dentist straightening the tooth, you want to do it gradually. There's a reason your foot's flat and overpronating. It's probably because you have tight knees, tight back, tight hips. And if you straighten your foot too much, it's going to put pressure on those joints before you get used to it. And then as you get used to it, so usually I go with my patients, a shoe for about a month, sandal slippers for about a month, more supportive insole, then more aggressive. If that's still not better than the custom insert. And at that point, if that's still not better, you want to look at braces potentially. When I say braces, you don't need a boot like this but there's a lot of good ones kind of like this. There's compression ones. They fit in your shoe. They can fit in your dress shoe. There's triple layer compression braces. I go over my favorite guide, my best ankle braces, but if the shoe, the orthotic, after a couple months, you're not getting used to it, this brace can do even better. This is where you have to strengthen your body. And there's a five stage process to this. You have to work on your muscle strength and your flexibility. I could talk about that for an hour, how to evaluate your biomechanical joint issues. I go over that specifically down below. Number two, you gotta work on your cardiovascular strength. If your heart's not strong and your blood's not flowing, you can't heal your muscles, you can't move for more than a minute or two, you have to get your cardio up too. Number three, you have to be sleeping properly. If you're not sleeping properly and your sleep's erratic, you can't heal your joints, you can't heal your muscles. So we go over a sleep guide as well. Number four, you have to work on your diet. You have to make sure you get enough protein to heal your muscles and strengthen your muscles. And you have to make sure you're at a good caloric balance so you're not gaining a ton of weight, so that you don't have diabetes, so that you don't have peripheral neuropathy. And then number five, there's phenomenal supplements that can help along the way. Things like creatine, things like vitamin D, magnesium. I go over all that below. And if I missed anything, let me know. I'd love to be able to go over more. I also go over my top 16 remedies, which include things like shockwave therapy, the best creams, the best massages, and everything else, including exercises.